Millinocket, Maine, once a booming mill town, now almost a ghost town. The paper mill, once a symbol of pride and prosperity in the region, now a reminder of a time that has come and gone. International trade is what basically took the paper industry in the United States down. It's not just here in the, in the town of Millinocket, it's worldwide. The Chinese, they're more clever than we are, you know, and we, when we do a deal with them, we usually, we get the sour end of it. Today, Millinocket is a small town of 5,000. The closest mall or movie theater is an hour's drive away. Many of the once bustling businesses in town now stand empty and abandoned. It's been very depressing for a lot of people. You know, they've had their hopes up and hopes that they would, something would come along that would change everything, but it, it hasn't. Dr. Kenneth Smith is the superintendent of Millinocket Public Schools. After watching his town fall apart around him, he decided it was time to take matters into his own hands. Smith's idea is to boost the school's population by charging Chinese students $27,000 to attend his high school for one year. They have some skills that we don't have that we'd love to instill in some of our students, this desire to learn and uh, get ahead by getting good education. It's a bold idea in a town where most view China as the reason their mill went bankrupt. But Smith argues that the competition that might have hurt the town's past can also help to reshape its future. We can't possibly compete with our labor market, and <clears throat> they've got 1.4 billion people. I think the competition is uh, good for us, and we have to learn and adjust. It's the way the economy works. Right now, there are 200 students that attend this high school, even though it was built for 800. 60% of the students here qualify for a state-run free lunch because their parents' income is at the poverty level. School administrators say that bringing in students from China will not only save the school, it'll save the town and bring it back to the days when the mill was booming. But not everyone in this almost exclusively white town is excited about the idea that their school might eventually have just as many Chinese kids as kids from Maine. Some people will have an issue with it. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, they're not from here. Make them go away. Most students in this high school have never traveled abroad. What they know about China, they say, they've seen on TV. I think the Chinese are going to be total shock. I, th I think of like high tech and way more advanced than us, like 10 times more money and like in a better society. And then you look at us and we're like poor and have nothing. And those struggling to survive in town are angry that the country they believe took their jobs from them is now the one they're looking to for help. Jimmy and Linda Martin have been living in Millinocket, Maine most of their lives. Jimmy worked in the paper mill for almost 40 years and saw the mill crumble before his eyes. You should have kept people working here except no, uh, not shipping them over overseas all the time. No, all the jobs have been shipping overseas. The couple doesn't have insurance and are barely able to make ends meet. Then these people, excuse me, but they come here from other countries. We have nothing. We don't have no insurance. Uh, we have to struggle to make a living because we lost the mill. And they have free housing free clothing, free food, free medical, we have nothing. Misconceptions about immigrants burdening the system have divided the community on the plan. But to Smith, Millinocket has no choice but to join the globalized economy, and the Chinese might just be their way to get there. We need to learn from them the things they do well, and they need to learn from us the things we do well. To him, it's all about looking forward, not back. Priya Shreether, RT, Millinocket, Maine.